There have been just so many heartbreaking stories that we're hearing from the Orlando massacre. I'm just curious to know how, how it makes you feel as a Muslim mm -hmm. and a lesbian to hear mm -hmm. just so much heartbreak right now that's going on in the U.S. You know, um, all kinds of people are targeted uh, in the United States uh, with guns and particularly with assault rifles and I don't uh, put one community above another uh, in terms of how I feel. Mm -hmm. um, it is heartbreaking uh, but at the same time you know the, 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 the change is going to come from the ground up not from the top down and so I hope that this marks a tipping point in the United States. Interestingly, I'm hearing conservatives begin to say, yeah, why do we need these assault rifles? Um, and that's something I hadn't heard even after Sandy Hook. So uh, while, while we weep for the victims and their families, um, I don't think they will have died in vain. Mm. You know, there's a lot of questions about the motive uh, of the shooter. You know, we know that he called 911 and swore allegiance to ISIS. Uh, we know that he'd been attending the same mosque uh, for years. Uh, as President Obama said, it looks like he self-radicalized through some propaganda uh, of extremist views he's, he saw on the Internet. Uh, but we've also heard from Muslim leaders who say this has nothing to do with Islam. What is your reaction to that? Okay, so moderate Muslims use the mantra, this has nothing to do with Islam, because they're not willing to face the fact that there are regressive verses in the Quran. And by the way, I speak as a faithful Muslim, as somebody who chooses to remain within my faith because I love it enough to point out that there are ways to reform how we practice Islam so that it really is a religion of peace. But when moderate Muslims say this has nothing to do with Islam, that is rubbish. After all, here was this gunman who uh, shouted, Allahu Akbar, um, God is greater. Um, now, that doesn't mean that he was motivated only by religion, but clearly there was some religious symbolism that helped incite uh, this incident. And so, frankly, moderate Muslims, who are not so moderate today, have to own up to the fact that we have got a problem in our community, and until we solve it with honesty, we will only see more damage done. So um, what does the Quran say about it all? We can only know that we don't know. That is why we need humility when it comes to interpretation. I have my interpretation. Somebody else can have their interpretation. Maybe we'll both see each other in hell. I don't know. But the point is that we have to have the humility to leave the judgment up to God. Very fascinating uh, viewpoints from you. Thank you for, for taking the time. Urshad Manji, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Walk me through the decision to breach. Um, obviously, like I said, you know, we, we, our goal, our main goal is to try to save lives. Um, when you start talking about the bomb vest, kind of the average or the normal in inclination of people is once you hear that someone has a bomb, you want to back up. And our normal protocol is to back up 1,000 feet. But my officers, officers knew. Um, that they had to stay there, even though they were in jeopardy, because there was a chance that we can get um, some of those people outside. So um, we started thinking about we have a, a good relationship with the sheriff's office here. They have a, an, an, an emergency, or a bomb disposal unit that has the capability of creating charges to blow through a hole through a wall. So I asked them to start prepping for a charge. What is a charge? Explain that for people. The charge is um, they kind of make it's a, it's actually explosive. They put it in a shape, and actually they, they'll put it on a wall, and they'll be able to blow a hole in the wall. And is that what they did? Yes, they did. Which wall was it? It was um, on the west side of the building. What our goal was is we knew we knew the suspect was in the north bathroom. We knew there were some additional hostages from some of the text messages and phone calls that were given. In an uh, adjacent bathroom. Right. So there's a bathroom just south of him. And we knew there were probably anywhere from 10 to 15 people in that bathroom <laughs> alive. So the decision was made, hey, that's we need to try to get them out as quickly as possible. So you're hearing that he's making these threats to put vests on people and put them in the four corners of the club to maximize casualties. You immediately realize we'll risk our own lives and not back up a thousand feet because we have got to get in there and get him. Right. So then the explosion? Right, they go ahead and set the charge. We get, I get approval from the chief um, to go ahead and initiate our plan. Um, they, set the, they let the charge go off, the charge detonates. It, um, it's only partially effective. So it only kind of it only kind of creases the wall or partially breaches the wall. Could, so you couldn't fully get in. Couldn't the get first inside explosion. at all. So 
Um, oh. We have a, a, bear, a Linco Bearcat armored vehicle, which has a ram on the front of it. And I immediately told the guys, go ahead and ram go ahead it and reach in. It. So they made an initial hole. Um, they realized they were a little off mark and it kind of put them in the hallway between two, two bathrooms. So the commander out on the scene, which is one of my lieutenants, immediately had the truck move and they made a couple of, of other breaches where, where they are finally able to get um, a hole into the bathroom and start pulling people out. Were people screaming at that time? I think they, they were quiet initially, on? and I think as, as you know, as, as we breached the hole, you know, we're calling to them and telling, hey, come to us. So they're taking our commands and they're, they're trying to get out. What's the gunman doing? Obviously, he's, he's hearing this noise. Right. At first, he's not doing anything. Um, as as he starts to realize kind of what's going on, um, I think he fired a couple shots. Within the bathroom? Within, either within the bathroom or outside the bathroom. That I'm not sure of yet. Um, we threw a couple of our distraction devices in, in the hallway just to kind of distract him so we can finish getting all the hostages out. Gas? No gas, because we hadn't even had people in there. Um, then as uh, they were preparing to breach another wall, another part of the wall, he came out and engaged our officers. On his own volition? On his own volition. So he is, where is he exactly? I mean, is it a small, tight space where he is outside of the bathroom? He comes out into the hallway between the two bathrooms. How far is he from your officers? I would say within probably 10 to 15 feet. And then what? And then he, they engage. He, they, he fires, they fire. And you know, that's kind of... That's where he was taken down? Right. In the hallway? Yep. Then when you all immediately go in the bathroom, what do you see? We actually have to breach another wall to get in. Because we can't get can't get by him. So they, they do a couple more breaches to get the rest of the people out. In total, how many hostages did he have? I don't have an exact number. I think we got um, probably eight to 15 out of the south bathroom and probably another five to six out of the, the north bathroom that he was in. 